Uh, right, okay, so we're, let's do, the one we've been talking about is factorial four. So notice, right, on your paper, you want to be starting the top left of your piece of paper. So I'm, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to say fact four. Now what we're actually going to do, because it takes, the way I'm going to draw this is a bit odd, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be showing me building the stack frame, effectively. And that's what I need to do in order to keep tracing this through. I'm not worrying about a column of stuff, like we did normal trace tables. So I start off, and I'm literally, I'm going to pretend that I am fully executing this function. So I've got, uh, the function's called fact, and it's got a parameter called n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the signature. OK? And I'm going to do that. And I, I'm going to put this symbol to say that we're entering the function. And on entry, I need to set up the parameter. So I've been passed a 4. So I'm going to write n equals 4 before I even start executing statements. I know I've just walked off camera, but I, you can probably still hear me. It doesn't matter. Right. And then, and this is nice because this is simple. I then look at the first line, just like as if I was doing a normal trace, isn't it? So I look to myself, right, OK, this is the version of n I'm working with, because I'm in this function. I've just set that up. So I say, right, OK, is that true? No, it's not true, is it? I'm not going to do that bit. So I'm going to jump straight to the else. I'm not writing a load of crap down, because that's just going to confuse me and the person trying to award me marks. So I'm going to go straight to that next line. And what I'm actually going to do is write it out. So I'm going to say return. The indentation is super important. You'll see when we get to the end, when we get to the base case. Right. I've got return n, but I'm not going to write n. I'm going to write what n currently is. So I'm going to say return 4 times, and then I'm going to call the function. That's the recursion part, remember. So I'm going to say fact. And it says n minus 1. So I'm going to pass as a parameter whatever n is minus 1. So I'm going to work it out based on this version of n. I'm emphasising that on purpose. Okay. If you draw this out well, then you won't have this confusion at all. It'll just say, right, n is that. It's 4. So I'm going to say, right, okay, 4 minus 1. So I'm going to say fact 3. And that's the end of the first phase of the recursion. But I've started again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, I need to enter the function again. So I'm going to set up the uh, stack frame. So I'm going to do that symbol again. Just for a carry on, in order for the computer to evaluate this expression, we have to evaluate this function. So until this process ends, when I'm probably over here, I won't be able to start working out what any of the answers are. So it's like, you don't know until the very end what the answer is. You can't even guess. Don't ever try and guess. If they give you a, a question and they say, here's something that's weird and made up and doesn't make any sense, what's the answer? You need to trace it through using this frame technique. All right? You can't guess it. Often what they'll try and do, they'll say, what is this program doing? You know, like we've had a question before where they say, right, well, just trace it through. What, what's it up to? What's it doing? And you can't work it out until you've got your data. OK. Right, so I'm going to start this again. And I'm going to, first off, assign the parameters. So in this case, n is 3. Look at my if. My if says n naught or 1 return 1. Well, now it's not going to hit either of those. So I'm going to go for the return line again. And again, I'm going to put in the values for this stack frame for n. So I've got n is 3. So I'm going to say 3 times. Then I'm going to call the factorial again. So I'm going to say fact n minus 1. So n is 3, so that must be fact 2. So you can see what the problem is. When you're trying to draw these, it's my fault, really. I'm making these arrows probably too deep. 
All right? So the deeper those arrows, the further across I'm going to go. It's a balance. They tend to, they won't give you something that recurses too much because it will actually be a nightmare to trace out. Okay, so I've got to that point. So in order to evaluate three times back two, I've actually got to execute the function again. So I'm going to execute the function again. Right, so again, straight into the function, set up the parameters. So in this case, n equals 2. And remember, the parameter name is what I call that value I've been given so that I can refer to it. So you're seeing this physically now. Right, so n equals 2 does not hit the true part of the if again. So we're going to recurse. So we're going to say return. And then we've got n. So n, look it up, it's 2 multiplied by the factorial. So we're going to say fact. And it was n minus 1. So we look up n. 2 minus 1 is 1. Thank God for that. We're going to hit the base condition. And we should be able to then do the process that makes it all work. So again, in order to evaluate 2 times fact 1, we have to execute or call the function. So we're going to call the function. Set up the parameter. So always look at your signature for your function. That's your, your starting point before you start executing any logic. So n equals 1. Right, OK, looking at that if this time, though. If n equals 0, no, it's not that. Ah, or n equals 1. So as long as one of those is true, we get true. So we hit our return. So we finally get to the end of one of the functions. And we go, yes, we can get out of there. So we're going to say return 1. Now, this next step is crucial. We're now going to pass back the answer for fact 1, which means we can evaluate that expression and return. So what we're going to end up doing now is cascade back. All right. Every time we return a value, we have got the piece of the puzzle we were waiting for so that we can evaluate an expression. So I'm going to return 1. Watch how I draw it. This is important. So I'm going to do that. I'm passing it back to where it was used. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the value on the little arrow. So I'm showing it being passed back. Now I can work out that expression. So I've got 2 times 1, which hopefully you all know is 2. So I'm going to return 2. So I'm going to gain from my return statement, I'm going to go, but I'm going to write 2. I'm trying to keep it as neat as possible because I want someone to be able to follow it in case I just mess up so that they can see that I've got the logic right of it. But, oh, I've got the number down wrong. Which I, you don't want to be doing that. Right, so now I have got everything I need to evaluate this expression. So fact 2 was 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm going to return 6. Then I've got everything for the next expression that was in the chain. So you get this chain in effect. Okay? Every time we roll back from a recursive level, we're doing what we call backtracking. There's a lot of algorithms that complicate things that are called backtrackers. In fact, there's a maze algorithm that's called a recursive backtracker. Okay, so it's explicitly showing that it's using recursion to work out the process for generating a maze. Okay. Right, so I've got this. So I've got now 4 times 6. So I, that's 24. So I'll return that. But that was the original call of fact. It's where we started. That was the starting point. So that's now... And really, if we call a function that returns a value, what should we do with the value? What happens to that 24 in this case? I put fact 4. Yes. Now, what happens in this case? What happens to the 24 that's been returned? It gets thrown away! 
Because we don't want it. We haven't said do anything with it. Right, in all these other cases, the return value was part of something else, wasn't it? An expression. So it was used. But here, I just wrote fact four. So it's like, the computer, if it was being sarcastic, it'd go, well, there's your answer, mate. Thanks for that. I could have been doing something else. I could have been calculating prime or something in the background, but you had me do this, and then you just chucked it away. Thanks for that. Cheers. You know, like when someone gives you, when teachers do this sometimes, they might get given a piece of work, and the, the students handed it in like six months late, and says, oh, I've got that piece of work for you. I've had this happen to me. I've got this piece of work for you, and you go, like, thanks for that. Screw it, I'm chucking it in. Same thing. That's what we're doing here. Okay. If I wanted to actually use that value, I'd have to store it. So I'd put an assignment in there. So like, okay, whatever comes back, stick it in C, and then I might print it out down here. I might say print C. But it's not wrong to just use a function to do something and not use its return value. Depends what you're doing. You might just be testing that it works and you're not bothered about what it produced. <coughs> you just wanted to follow a process through or something. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so unless you capture and store the return value, it does just get binned off. Not good. Right. Anyone got any queries about that? The process, it's all about clarity. And I know some of you have got issues with clarity when you're writing stuff down, but this is one of those things that you've really got to work on. Okay? We're showing clearly each function call, and we're showing that there's a separate set of data for n. So we've actually got, what, one, two, three, four different values for n, depending on which part of the stack frame we're in. Okay? In Visual Studio, you can see the call stack. It's called call stack. There's a window. And it'll show you what function called what function. When we have a go at coding some of these things up, you'll be able to trace it through and you'll see the call stack growing. When you can get it to crash, you'll still see the call stack, but you'll see at what point, what value you got to before it crashed. Okay, so we'll eventually, we'll code some up on this in a week or so, um, and we'll be able to see that. And see how far we got, see how close we got to one, uh, before we all like went. Right, okay, I'll stop the vid there. If I can.